Today's story starts with Erasmus Darwin, famous English doctor, inventor and grandfather of Charles Darwin. Very often he had to travel to his patients in a horse carriage. British streets were bad and the risk of the high carriage turning over was even higher while turning because of its fifth wheel design. Advantage of the fifth wheel is that all four wheels are always pointing to the middle point of the corner, which means no wheel is rubbing over the surface at low speeds. Disadvantage is that the front wheels change their position and that destabilizes the vehicle and it could roll over easier depending on the wheel's position. In 1761, Darwin designed a steering where the front wheels stayed at their position, but the wheel turns on the spot. He built a carriage like this and tested it on his daily trips. The carriage was much safer and more stable, but the problem was now that the middle axis of the wheels did not intersect the corner's middle point anymore. In other words, one wheel was always rubbing. So that had to be solved geometrically. Instead of having straight steering arms, they angled them to turn the inner wheel a bit more than the outer wheel. I made a sketch to show you this a bit better. So if the steering arms are straight, both front wheels always turn the same. You can see here that the closer the steering arm is to its vertical position, the slower it turns the wheel and vice versa. For the wheel axis to intersect the center of the corner, the outside wheel should steer a bit slower than the inner wheel. So we angle the steering arm to the inside. Result is that the steering arm of the outer wheel is passing its vertical position and hence turning slowlier. On the other hand, the inner wheel turns a bit faster and this creates an angle difference between both wheels. And just for fun, let's point the steering arms outside. Now the outside wheel is turning faster than the inner wheel, but that's usually not what we want. So, depending on track width and wheelbase, you can tune these geometries so that the wheel's axis can hit the center of the corner. It was a genius design, but Darwin didn't want to file a patent application. Because before all, he was a doctor and he was worried this could hurt his image. So, the design was used in the following decades and spread across Europe, but there wasn't a patent. 45 years later, in 1816, when Darwin already passed away, the Bavarian Royal Wainwright Georg Lankensberger built carriages with Darwin's steering system, which also made the vehicle a lot shorter. And by the way, Lankensberger was born in the same house where Pope Benedict XVI was born later. So anyway, he wanted to file a patent application for this, but he needed a sponsor. He found an investor in the Saxon businessman Rudolf Ackermann, who lived in London. Ackermann himself became a Wainwright first, just like his father, but later developed a business in printing and founded a drawing school. He filed the application together with Lankensberger in 1817 and they received the pattern in 1818. Because Ackermann was the sponsor, the steering was now called Ackermann steering or A steering. And today there is a so-called Ackermann angle and suspension design. This angle is the angle difference between the two front wheels. So although we should call this Darwin steering because he invented it or Lankensberger steering because he started the patent process for it, we call it Ackermann steering because he sponsored the patent application. Let me know if you like this little look back in history and check out my other videos below, my online courses on race car design, my online shop for customized motorsport equipment and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member. See you at the next video.